Paul and the Christians are gathered to Jesus after he comes back to destroy the Antichrist. And that is after the Great Tribulation. Okay, and then the second point I have here, I have four points. Paul and the Christians will be raised from the dead and raptured, uh, uh, sorry, and raptured when death is swallowed up in victory. So Paul and the Christians will be raised from the dead and raptured when death is swallowed up in victory. When death is swallowed up, swallow up. You swallow up something, that means it doesn't exist anymore. No more death. No more death. You know, that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that Paul talked about that, you know, that the incorruptible, the corruptible will become incorruptible. So, uh, so we don't, you know, it, the mortal we, will become immortal. So we don't die anymore. No more death. And Christian will still die in the tribulation. So there's no more death. Death is swallowed up will be after the great tribulation. Because Christian will still be killed during the tribulation. So no more death. That means it's after the great tribulation. 1 Corinthians 15.52 It talks about that uh, the changing to become immortal. Death is swallowed up in victory. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. To, so this is one moment, one short moment. At the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible. And we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So here, in a short moment, in a twinkling of an eye, you just blink your eyes in just that one moment, the last trumpet will sound, and then the dead will be raised incorruptible. We talk about the trumpet later, but now we concentrate on the resurrection and death is swallowed up. And the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Now notice that Paul talked about we in this uh, four passages I, I will talk about. Here in 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1 it says, and our gathering together to him. So Paul is part of this gathering. Our, that means Paul is part of it. Paul is gathered to Jesus when Jesus comes back to destroy the Antichrist. So this is our. And here, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52 on talks about we. So that includes Paul also. So Paul will be changed. Now definitely he has to be raised from the dead. Paul already died. So it's very obvious that he would be raised from the dead and then he will be changed. He will change his body will be changed from corruptible to incorruption. And also mortal. The, bo the body we have now is corruptible. We can get sick, you can get hurt and we can die. And then so we are mortal. But we can will put on now the word is must. So the corruptible that means the the Christians who have the body that is corruptible must must it must happen. It must happen. That means all the Christians with a corruptible body must put on incorruption, and then all the mortal Christians must put on immortality. So must it will happen to every Christian. Every real, every real Christian. When this corruptible has put on incorruption, this mortal has put on immortality, then it will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Death is swallowed up in victory. That is a time when no more death is swallowed up. That Jesus has already, not just now on the cross, Jesus has conquered death, but death still occurs. That we still have death. But when Jesus' second coming, when we rise from the dead, death is no more. When we rise from the dead, no more. Christians all are transformed to be immortal. So there's no more death. It's swallowed up. And during the tribulation, Christians still 
die, so no more death. That means after the great tribulation. Okay, I'm going to connect these passages when we talk about Paul talk about we. Okay, so we look at the next passage. First Corinthians chapter four verses fifteen to seventeen, and also Philippians three twenty. There it says that we who are alive. So here, Paul includes himself. We. We who are alive and remain until the coming, the parousia. Again, he uses the word parousia. Of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. So, those who are alive and remain until the second coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. That means, those who are asleep, those who are dead, we cannot come to be with Jesus. We cannot see the second coming of Jesus before them. That means they will see the second coming of Jesus together with us. We cannot precede them. We cannot uh, see the second coming of Jesus earlier than they. We'll see the second coming of Jesus together. The dead Christians and the live Christians will see Jesus' second coming together. The Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Now here talk about the trumpet also. So that connects to 1 Corinthians 15, it talks about the last trumpet. And the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be caught up, raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. So here, Paul said that those who are dead will rise from the dead, and then we who are alive. Now, when Paul talked about that, he was still alive, but now we know that Paul is already dead. So he belongs to the group that is dead. So he will be raised from the dead, and then he will be caught up together with all the Christians to meet the Lord in the clouds, and then we'll always be with the Lord. Now, Philippians 3.20 talks about we also. Paul talks about we also. We also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So he waits for the G coming of Jesus, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body. So, it's, so he said that we are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when he comes, we'll be transformed to be like his glorious body will be conformed to His glorious body. That means when Jesus comes back, the Christian will be transformed to be like Jesus, to have a glorious body like Jesus. So, when we understand this passage, that means in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, with the second coming of Jesus, the parousia, the Lord Himself will descend. He will come back. He comes back. And then the dead will be raised from the dead. And then we who are alive will be caught up to be with Jesus. And then we'll be with Jesus always. Then they would have been transformed to His glorious body as Philippians 3.20 says. Now this passage in 1 Thessalonians 4, chapter 4, it doesn't talk about transformation. But from Philippians 3.20, we can see that it proves that. When we see Jesus, Jesus one day, when we meet with Jesus one day, we'll be transformed. So that means in 1 Corinthians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 on, when it talk about when Christians will be raised from the dead, and then um, will be caught up, when we are with Jesus, then we'll be transformed also. So what will happen in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, what will happen is that, Jesus will come back, and there will be the trumpet of God, and there will be resurrection, and there will be transformation according to Philippians 3.20. When we are with Jesus, then we'll be transformed. So there will be the resurrection and transformation and rapture. Now the point is, will Paul be raised from the dead one time or two times? When 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talk about Paul being raised from the dead 
and transform. And First Thessalonians chapter four talk about his resurrection, and then implying transformation because Philippians three twenty says that when we will see Jesus when he comes back, then we'll be transformed. So. This transformation and this resurrection to Paul of Paul would it happen one time or two times? It has to happen only one time because Paul is dead now, and he'll be raised from the dead, will be transformed. He will not be transformed and then later die and then transform again. So Paul can only be raised from the dead and transform once. Now that is. Absolute truth. He cannot be raised from the dead and die again. He has become incorruptible. He has become immortal. So he doesn't die anymore. So that means, First Thessalonians chapter four fifteen on is fulfilled at the same time when Paul is raised from the dead in First Corinthians chapter fifteen. Okay, now this is very clear. Exegesis explaining the Bible passage. I'm explaining the Bible passage. You know, because my two degrees in theology, um, the major of both exegesis is exegetical theology. It's I study, try to study the Bible. You know, I study the Bible to arrive at theology. I don't bring a theology theology to fit to make the Bible fit my theology. I want to derive my theology from the Bible. So what I just said that is when First Corinthians chapter fifteen says that Paul we shall be changed and raised from the dead. Paul is among the dead. He will be raised from the dead, and he will be changed. So Paul is raised from the dead and changed there, and it only happened once. Therefore, this. Is fulfilled at the same time as First Thessalonians chapter four, and First Thessalonians chapter four talks about his resurrection, and then implying his transformation as, as we uh, show in Philippians three twenty that when we wait for Jesus when he comes back, then we'll be conformed to his glorious body. Therefore, in First Thessalonians chapter four fifteen on, it will talk about Paul. Being raised from the dead, and then he is transformed and then raptured. So this is only one time that Paul will be raised from the dead and transformed, and this is the same as First Corinthians chapter fifteen. So it's fulfilled in the same time. This prophecy and First Thessalonians chapter four is fulfilled at the same time because Paul is raised from the dead and transformed only one time. He's raised from the dead and transformed only one time, and then death is swallowed up. So these two passages are fulfilled at the same time, and the fulfillment is when death is swallowed up in victory. And death is swallowed up, that is after the great tribulation, because during the tribulation there will still be death of Christians. When there is no more death for the Christians. The, all the corruptible Christians must put on incorruption. All the mortal Christians must put on incorruption. So every Christian at that time will be transformed and raptured. And that is a time when death is swallowed up. There's no more death. That means there's uh, the rapture. Uh, that means the great tribulation has already uh, is already over. So that this is fulfilled, Paul and the Christians will be raised from the dead and raptured when death is swallowed up in victory, and that is after the great tribulation. No more death. Okay. And then the third point I'm proving is Paul and the Christians are raptured at the last trumpet, and that is after the great tribulation. We have noticed that both passages talk about the trumpet. Ah,、uh, the First Corinthians chat talk about the last trumpet. First Thessalonians four talk about the trumpet, and also Matthew twenty four talk about the trumpet. Now, here in First Corinthians chapter fifteen, the time when Paul will be raised from the dead 
and transformed to be incorruptible, to be immortal. That is at the last trumpet. That means last trumpet, no more trumpet after that. Okay, very simple. Last trumpet, no more trumpet after that. No more trumpet after that. Okay, that's very clear. No more trumpet after that. When Paul is raised from the dead and transformed, no more trumpet. And then First Thessalonians chapter four fifteen, on that it talks about that there is the trumpet of God. Now all this is one same Greek word. The same Greek word is selpik. Look at the first line, selpik, and the Strong's number is four five three six four five three six. So it's um, the cell peaks in all these passages are one same word. So here in First Thessalonians chapter 15, 52, when Paul will be raised from the dead and transformed will be at the last trumpet. And First Thessalonians 4, 15 on, it also talk about with the trumpet of God and also he'll be raised from the dead and also based on uh, Philippians 3.20 that when he meets with Jesus he'll also be transformed so first Thessalonians chapter 4 15 on he will be raised from the dead and transformed also so these two passages are fulfilled at the same time first Corinthians 15 and first Thessalonians chapter 4 are fulfilled at the same time. So the trumpet is the same trumpet. Same time. So last trumpet, first Thessalonians is also the last trumpet. Okay, so because Paul can only be raised from the dead one time. So both passages are fulfilled at the same time when Paul is raised from the dead and he's transformed. And so the trumpet are the same trumpet and is the last trumpet. And then we move on to Matthew 24, 31. Here, Jesus talked about His second coming. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And then immediately after the tribulation, then, you know, after the tribulation, then He talked about the second coming of Jesus. So, Jesus talked about after the great tribulation of those days the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light no more sun the, uh, the sun will be dark and the moon will not give out light the stars will fall from heaven and the powers of the heaven will be shaken then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So they will see Jesus coming back. All the tribes will mourn. Will mourn. These are non-Christians. The Christians will not mourn. So these are all the, the, the non-Christians will mourn. But we'll see later that also include the Christians because here it says gather together. So the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with the power, with power and great glory, and he shall send his angels with a great trumpet, great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect. Now here it talks about the trumpet also. With the sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together the elect from the four winds, from the end of the heaven to the other. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the mill and one will be taken and the other left. So here talk about the trumpet. Now the same word trumpet, salpik, is used in the three passages about Jesus' second coming. In 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 15 verse 52, it talks about the last trumpet and second and in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, it talks about the trumpet of God. So both of this is when Paul will be raised from the dead 
and transformed. And Matthew 24, 31, uh, same word, cell peaks. Now Paul, he was converted to, to Christianity. After he was converted to Christianity, he certainly would read the Gospels. So he certainly knows about Jesus. That um, he also uh, said Jesus, you know, that one, uh, in one verse he said that, uh, that as Jesus said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. So he quoted the word of Jesus. So he knows the word of Jesus. Paul, you know, he became a Christian and he preached about Jesus. Of course, he knows about Jesus. And he knows about what Jesus talked about, different topics. You know, he would study. He would study uh, what has Jesus said. He wanted to understand Jesus. He wanted to know that, you know, in many places it says that he showed to the people that Jesus is the Christ. So if he wanted to show to people that Jesus is the Christ, he must know about Jesus. You know, it, it would be impossible that Paul doesn't know much about Jesus. He must know about Jesus, right? We have to agree that, that he must know about Jesus. So he talked about Jesus all the time from the different epistles that he wrote. And then also in the book of Acts, he preached about Jesus. So he must know about Jesus. So he will be familiar with Matthew 24 when Jesus talked about his second coming. When God also revealed to Paul about the second coming. So Paul talked about his second coming in these passages we just talked about. So he certainly would know about Jesus talking about the second coming. And he would also know about when Jesus come back there will be the trumpet. That, that he will gather the people when he comes back. So when Paul talked about the trumpet related to Jesus' second coming, he should be talking about the same trumpet. Because when he, you know, he saw this passage that after the great tribulation, then Jesus will descend from heaven, then he will, you know, the whole earth will see him and the non-Christian will mourn, and then uh, his angels He'll send his angels with a great trumpet, sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect. So he knows that this is talking about the same thing that Jesus will come back after the great tribulation and with the trumpet to gather the people. It's the same time, it's after the great tribulation. As we showed earlier, when Paul talked about his gathering to uh, Jesus, is after the great tribulation. Okay, so we saw that when talk about when Jesus, uh, when Paul talked about his gathering to Jesus, he knows that the Christians will be gathered after the great tribulation. That is when Christ will come back and destroy the Antichrist with his glory. So that is the Antichrist is destroyed. That is after the great tribulation. So that's the time when Paul is gathered to him. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 52, it talks about the last trumpet. And then he will be raised from the dead, and then he will be transformed. And this passage is fulfilled at the same time as 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 on, until the second coming of Jesus. Also, Paul knows this word uh, parousia when the disciples asked Jesus about the parousia of Jesus, and then Jesus explained that to them, that there will be these signs of the second coming of Jesus, and then there will be the great tribulation, and then Jesus will appear on, uh, in the heavens uh, on the clouds, and then the, the tribes will mourn, and then he will descend, he will come back. So Paul is familiar with parousia and trumpet. So when he talk about the parousia and the trumpet, he will talk about he will be talking about the same trumpet. He will not be talking about oh there are two different trumpets. When he talk about the parousia, he will be talking about the same parousia, and then he will be raised from the dead. So that means he will experience this trumpet, and he will be raised from the dead and will be transformed. That we have shown earlier that first 
Thessalonia, he'll be raised from the dead and he'll be transformed and raptured. And that is at the trumpet, at the parousia, and that is at the time when when Jesus Christ will come back to destroy the Antichrist and it will be at a time when death is swallowed up, no more death, that is after the uh, Great Tribulation. So at the last trumpet, he will be talking about the same last trumpet. And 